Okay then. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Barb is gone. Na uh, Nancy's friend, who I hypothesize, I'm gonna try and fact check this, but she looks like she's done up to be the frumpy friend in the 80s, but I feel like she's just the cutest thing ever once you, like, see her in a more natural state and not just, ooh, I'm the not-so-partier to the friend who is studious but wants to be the cool girl kind of thing. And she's gone. She gets captured. I assume captured. I don't think she gets killed. I don't think anybody really gets killed in this show besides... Or, you know, by these monster things. I think all the killing is done by, like, other people. Eleven is just staying at uh, Mike's house. I can't remember the black kid's name, but Dusty is... Is it Lucas? Dusty and Lucas? I think that's the black kid's name. But they're both con they were both convinced that she's just a nut job. Then she, like, went all superpowers on him and just like, no, and shuts the door with her mind. And, like, her nose bleeds a little bit, so I don't know if it's a stress thing from the situation or if she, like, legitimately has, like, if it's, like, that strong of powers that it actually messes with her head. And, uh, Joyce, um, Will's mom gets another phone after the last one was, like, uh, you know, shocked and damaged. And Will actually, because you know, somebody calls and it's Will's, you know, it's Will breathing, but this time... Will actually starts to, he actually says mom, and then it, you know, cuts out, and that phone gets destroyed, but, you know, you got a bunch of flashing lights, he's at the house, and leading her to jo her son, Jonathan's room, and it's so weird, because, like, the Clash is playing, because that's a song that he and his brother listen to, and it's, oi, it is very intriguing, and the freaking, <clears throat> like, as soon as the lights cut out, and all that, like, this monster tries to go through the wall, but it's, like, a rubber thing, so it doesn't, like, burst through, just like, Rawr! it's so weird, and, like, Jonathan and Will's dad is just the deadbeat of deadbeats, it seems like, in this show so far. The diner owner from previous episode, Benny, he, like, he was killed last episode, but they, the people who shot him made it look like he had a suicide. <sighs> One thing I'm noticing about this show is that it's mostly fairly calm, and then it's, like, bombshell, all of a sudden out of nowhere. This show is just making me think, like, most of it's just the waiting, and then... Something crazy happens. Eleven and the boys, she's, like, trying to explain, like, what's where Will's at, and she takes that D&D table thing that, she, that they were playing on before, picks Will's piece, and then puts it down, and they're just like, that's Will, alright? She just throws him off the table, Flips the board around, it's just darkness, it's black. And then she puts on this, I think, Will's piece on there. And I'm like, okay, so I think it's trying to say that that's the other side of things. Like, I know this is all about different realities and whatnot, so maybe that's the other side of our reality is what I'm trying to get at. And they're just, and she's, they're like, is he gone? He's like, no, hiding. From what? And then puts down that monster piece. And I'm like, that's the bad guy, isn't it? And they, so I'm kind of right. I think they are sort of tying in the D&D thing a little bit, to, at, least, at least as an, an explanatory kind of rule thing. And uh, we get Private Joker and his boys again. They go to Will's shed where he was last, you know, picked up and seen. And they see this ooze growing out of it. I'm like, okay, just that's weird. I don't know why there was ooze, but there was. Also, Will's brother is kind of, I guess he gives off a creep revive, and I can kind of see why, because he was taking pictures of where his brother was last seen, then he, um, he uh, eventually stumbles onto Mike's sister and her boyfriend's house and starts taking pictures of, them, of her and her friends outside and it's like, alright, you're being kind of weird there, dude. And that was when uh, Barbie, it's, you know, everybody was gone and inside and she was just outside just like, I'm bored and not happy and then snatch. I think this is going to be the same thing as Wayward Pines where like, they'd build up for half the season and then finally splooge information. And I'm, I'm not against that, I'm fine with this. I'm patient. I'm excited to see how this goes, because all the acting is good, everything looks nice, and it's building up the intrigue, and I like that. So, that's episode two, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.